Hi, it's me losing Lisa. I was going to talk more about my weight loss efforts, but I just did that two and a half days ago. So I thought I might talk about something else that I'm going through right now, and that is that I have a cold sore. And a lot of people become confused about the different types of sores that uh, come from the herpes family. So I decided let's clarify things. There are three different conditions that I'm going to talk about that come from the herpes family. One is a cold sore, which I have. The second is genital herpes. And the third is shingles. I'm going to end it with a quick little ditty about uh, shingles vaccine. Now, cold sores affect about 90% of the planet. And they are a cluster of teeny tiny blisters on the lip that uh, then burst, drain a clear liquid, and then crust over, and that is caused by the herpes simplex virus one. You may get a fever. The sore is often red, swollen, painful. You may get swollen lymph glands, and it typically can heal on its own within two weeks. Um, basically, transmission is through contact with a sore through either kissing or sharing eating utensils, razors, toothbrushes from a, an infected person uh, being exposed to their saliva. There is no cure. Um, ex also, other things that may cause um, the transmission of, of herpes or not so much the transmission, but an episode would be exposure to sunlight, like when you go to the beach or spend the day out playing soccer. Um, a lot of wind. Um, if your immune system is compromised, such as when you're pregnant, when you're stressed out, if you have cancer, women often get it when uh, right before they get their period. And also if you're extremely tired, if you have a cold or even the flu, how do you prevent yourself from getting it? Well, one is avoid sharing your personal objects. Don't share your toothbrush. Don't share your razor. You've been hearing about this for years. Don't share your personal items. Everybody should have their own personal items. Also, if you're going to spend time in the sun, you should be using a sunscreen. There are lip balms that have SPF 15 and higher uh, that you can use uh, before you go out for uh, an all day activity out in the sun. Also, wash your hands often and you know, cold sores can, you don't have to see the cold sore uh, to not get it. It's contagious even if you don't see them. So it's always important regardless of whether somebody has or doesn't have the the sore that you just have your own personal items and avoid sharing okay so what can be the treatment one you can leave it alone and let it heal within two weeks on its own or um, as many people feel and I felt as well it's a little embarrassment because you don't want people to think that you have a, a sexually transmitted disease because this is not cold sores are not a sexually transmitted disease um, you can take an antiviral like uh, acyclovir, valacyclovir, or famcyclovir, which is prescribed by your doctor, and that will help speed up recovery and will also help reduce pain. Now, it, besides you taking the antiviral for regular pain medication, extra strength Tylenol, ibuprofen, and naproxen, those are the three pain meds that are over the counter. You don't need a prescription for them. However, there are some things that you need to know about cold sores. You need to seek medical care if you have a weak immune system for whatever reason. Your, your sore does not heal within two weeks and you have uh, increased frequency of cold sores and also if you have any uh, cold sore near or on your eye. Okay, so that's cold sore, uh, herpes simplex virus one. The next thing we're gonna talk about are genital herpes. Genital herpes are caused by genital herpes virus two. 
It is a common sexually transmitted disease. Small red bumps or tiny white blisters that are painful, that can itch, that are sore and tender, or you may not have any symptoms at all. Uh, it is spread through sexual contact. That's why they call it genital herpes. And uh, the only way to prevent transmission is to use condoms. So please use condoms. You also don't want to get any other permanent sexually transmitted diseases like HIV. And you also don't want to get some of the other that are treatable, but you know, they are also uh, not good to have. They're not good for your health wise. Um, let's see, after you, you first become infected, the virus becomes dormant, but it can reactivate at any time. So if you're under stress or if you're right before your period, it may, it may activate itself and then you may have an outbreak of genital herpes. Again, there's no cure and the medication uh, can decrease the symptoms and speed recovery, but that's about it. So who would be at greater risk for getting uh, this genital herpes is one, if you have multiple sex partners. So uh, please be very cautious. If you're gonna have multiple sex partners, use condoms. You don't wanna get a permanent uh, virus like this. And especially if you decide to become pregnant and have children in the future, uh, you can pass it on to your, your, your baby at birth. So you don't want, you know, your baby to get herpes. It could be deadly to a newborn. And also there are three ways that you can diagnose genital herpes, or I think even the, uh, the, the herpes type one, as well as herpes type two, you can be diagnosed by a culture swab of the sore itself, especially while it's draining. Uh, a PCR is a blood test that tells you if it's, if it's herpes one or herpes two. And then a regular blood test tells you if you've had herpes in the past. Oftentimes the doctor will do two or, or all three of these tests, depending on what your symptoms are and if you're displaying an actual open sore. Um, basically that's it about genital herpes. So we talked about cold sores, that's herpes simplex one. Genital herpes is uh, herpes type two. And now we're gonna talk about shingles. Shingles is also a part of the herpes family. It is a viral infection that results in a painful rash and is caused by the herpes zoster virus, also known as varicella zoster virus. It is the same virus that causes the chicken pox. Um, again, this virus lies inactive in nerve tissue, in the spinal cord, or in the brain. And when it reactivates, it does so in the form of shingles. So in other words, you have to have had the chicken pox in the past um, in order to first get the shingles. Now, unfortunately, the shingles can last up to two to uh, six weeks, and it can be rather painful. Uh, the treatment, um, well, actually, let's talk more a little bit more about the symptoms. Again, pain, burning, numbness, and tingling. You're usually what you start out with in an area or a patch of skin, and then um, all of a sudden there is a uh, some uh, a red rash then blisters start to form uh, a cluster of tiny blisters and then they start to open up and drain a clear fluid and then they crust over when the when the fluid is draining is when you can pass it from one person to the other um, other than that you can develop a fever headache sensitivity to light and then just fatigue you can spread shingles to another person even if they've never had the chicken pox. So the first person gets the chicken pox, starts the infection, and now they have a shingles infection at the age of 65 or whatever age, and now their buddy has never had the, the chicken pox or has had the chicken pox, and they say, hey, what's this rash? And they touch your sore and it has ooze on it, 
they can now get the shingles vaccine. I mean, I'm sorry, they can now get the shingles uh, virus, the uh, infection, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, let's see, what else did I want to mention? Um, uh, let's see, da, 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 da. again, it's a danger to people with weak immune system, newborns, if you're pregnant, um, those with cancer organ transplants or have HIV or um, have very high risk of forgetting it. Complications, a very big complication is uh, post-herpatic neuralgia. Now, this is when the nerve fibers are so badly damaged that it causes this constant pain, burning, numbness, tingling, and you may not have any more blisters. The blisters have long gone, but you still are having the, blister, the, the pain of the shingles despite the recovery of the actual wound. Uh, another complication is if you get shingles in your eye, you can lose your vision or have permanent damage to your eye. If you uh, have shingles that enters your brain, you can have damage to the nerve endings that innervate your face, your, um, your ears, and in other words, you can develop facial paralysis if it, it, if it affects the nerves on your face. If it affects your ear, you can have change in your hearing or balance problems. Um, also, again, here's another wound that even though it started out as a virus, you still are at risk of developing a bacterial infection if it doesn't heal properly. So again, antiviral, acyclovir, famcyclovir, valacyclovir, except this time for pain, uh, you may need something a little stronger. There's something called capsaicin cream, which you can buy over the counter. It's a cream that has aspirin in it. Uh, another medication that's used for post-herpatic neuralgia in particular is gabapentin. And also uh, lidocaine gels or creams are very effective as well. And let's see uh and you may need a narcotic pain medication to help you with your um shingles pain it's very painful um and that's all i have to say about the three uh, herpes conditions cold sores herpes simplex one genital herpes are uh herpes uh two or they say sometimes call it herpes simplex two as well shingles is called caused by Herpes zoster virus, also known as varicella zoster. And that's basically it with that. In terms of the shingles vaccine, shingles vaccine has shown to reduce the chance of, uh, of getting the shingles by 51%. And the, it reduces the chance of getting post-herpetic neuralgia by 67%. So that's pretty significant. Um, it is recommended for those over the age of 60, uh, whether they have a history of chicken pox or not. And it also helps prevent future occurrences from happening if you've had it in the past. It can protect you for five years and the FDA recently approved it for people over the age of 50. However, insurance companies are not always covering it if you're between 50 and 60. They will cover it if you're over 60. So, what are you going to do? Um, basically, that's it, except that if you are allergic to gelatin, neomycin, um, if you have HIV or a weak immune system or are pregnant, you should not get the shingles vaccine. And if you look below, you'll see a list of references where you might uh, get additional information besides what I provided you with today. Thank you for joining me and I hope you've had um, some great learning experience with me today and um, make some comments, uh, ask questions and uh, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks and have a great day.